with Henry Morgan. During the 17th century, Henry Morgan struck terror into the hearts of the Spaniards. Not a ship of Spain was safe from Morgan's buccaneers. When our story opens, a Spanish ship had just been taken. Tragic news for Don Pietro Pizarro, governor of Cuba, because part of his personal treasure, including the fabulous and priceless Aztec necklet, was amongst the cargo. Pizarro swore that Morgan would be captured, and his daughter Dolores swore to get the necklet back. The renegade Spaniard Diaz, a member of Morgan's crew, also covered at the necklet, and upon reaching Port Royal, incited two members of the crew to murder Morgan. That night, in a dark alley, they sprang upon the unsuspecting man, but Morgan was saved by a stranger who was unwilling to tell him anything about himself. Come, man. That's a surly answer to give to anyone whose life you've just saved. I have my reasons. To make it a strange place, friend, it's best not to ask too many questions of strangers here. Many are the reasons why men are on this accursed island. I can think of many, but you tell me some. Some are here because they're sent. Bonded servants, I think they're called. The term slave applies better. Sent here to rot in the marshes of the island or sweat their hearts out on the cane fields. Others come to forget. So, friend, I think it's best we part. Look, you, I like the sound of your voice. Strange to meet a man of education in this part of Port Royal. I'd like to see your face in the light. I'm a man who likes the dark. I'll ask of you one request. Let me see if I can identify my would-be assassins in the dark. Gladly. Hmm. Yeah, so that's what it is, is it? Two members of my own crew. And why should they seek to kill me? Ah, my friend, the greed of man. It seems there are none about me I can trust. Such is the way of the world. Could I trust you, friend? We have agreed to part. I don't need to look far to know the reason of the, this attack tonight. And I know who was responsible for it, but I can't prove it. I'm looking for a man I can trust implicitly. Come with me. I'd like to talk with your friend. No. If it's the light you're frightened of, I'll be taking you to a place in which everyone present fears the light. You'll be quite safe there. Where is this place? Hergy of the Dolphin Tavern? No. Uh, then you're a stranger in these parts. What manner of place is it? Now, my friend, I'll show you that I will. There's but a short walking distance from here. The Dolphin Tavern. Den of iniquity. Sin and vice. Rendezvous and hideout for buccaneer and pirate, and all of it ruled over by Kitty, the buccaneer's bell. Kitty, whose fame had spread into every corner, every lair, every swamp and creek where pirates gathered, from the keys of Florida to the most remote and unknown island of the Caribbean. For a smile from Kitty, men would steal from their shipmates. For a kiss, they would kill. Every night from dusk to dawn, Kitty serves the drinks and gives her favors. Her light Irish brogue and her cascading laughter sounding strange amongst the coarse oaths and harsh voices of the scum gathered from every part of the world. Deftly she moves amongst them, skillfully eluding the attentions of an unwelcome arm, sometimes seeing a familiar face which has been absent for some time. Well, if it's not Pat Joy, Pete, well, you're back again in Port Royal. And they haven't hanged you yet from the yard arm. Oh, it is right glad I am to see you. There. The welcome is planted on a hungry mouth. Then, with agility born of practice, Kitty is out of the place and laughingly on her way. The air hangs heavy in the Dolphin Tavern with stale tobacco smoke, smoking lamps and spilled liquor. The faces are vague in the haze and half-light. And as Kitty goes towards a room at the back of the tap room, a curtain of an alcove quickly parts and her wrist is caught in the hand of steel. Almost roughly, she is pulled into the alcove. The curtains fall into place, and Kitty looks into a pair of black, burning eyes. So, you didn't expect me back tonight, eh? Why, Diaz, I didn't see you come into the tavern. No, that is true, but I come here, I watch you. I see you giving your kisses away. Someday I come back and I strangle you. All right, glad I am to see you, Diaz. Do not lie to me. I saw the way you behaved in the tavern. You do not care whether dear he come or he does not come back. And tonight I come to tell you that perhaps before long I'll be able to buy your freedom. Oh, you buy my freedom. And since when has a member of a pirate's crew had enough money to be able to pay the sum which would buy Kitty her freedom? You know full well I'm a bonded servant sent from England, practically a slave. And you know the price my master, Bowlegged Jobson, would ask for my freedom. Seeing that 
I'm responsible for the great success of this tavern. I know all that. Perhaps tonight I will have the money which he wants. Perhaps tomorrow I hang about your lovely white neck rubies, and in your ears I place the finest pearls on your fingers, the heaviest of rubies, bracelets of gold around your wrists. And then you'll be my own woman, eh? I give you a big, fine house, plenty of servants, carriages, houses, eh? Then you'll be mine, eh? You can do all that for me? Please, man, tell me how... No, I... no, no. That is my secret. The other men, they would like to do it for you. But me, Diaz, I am the man with brains. I will do it. Tomorrow morning, you'll see, I come. I buy your freedom. I take you away and you'll be mine. Pearls in my ears, fine dresses, a horse, a carriage of my own, rubies and emeralds around my neck. You would do this for me? I will do anything in the world for you to take you away from here, to know that you are safe from others. Oh, no. No kiss for you until I see your purchase money and the jewels in your hand. Can you come back here? Yes, you had best return to the tap room. Your lord and master has come in. It's Captain Henry Morgan himself. Morgan? Yeah. No. No, it is impossible. Why? Who is it he has with him? He's one I've never seen before. Look at him. Oh, it is so fair. He is so fair. His eyes must be blue and tall and broad of shoulder. Who is he? I do not know. I've never seen him before. What is he doing with Captain Henry? Well, perhaps you'd best go and see. Diaz hardly hears what Kitty says. His face has gone sallow. His heart is pounding in his breast. His plot has gone wrong. Nagging fear is at the back of his brain. What caused it to fail? Through the smoky haze, he watches Morgan and his companion weave their way to an empty table. Morgan's companion looks at him closely. His bright steel blue eyes are light with recognition. And quietly, he appraises his new friend with fresh interest. Both sit at the table, eyeing each other closely for the first time. I might have been ignorant as to what the Dolphin Tavern was, but I'm not ignorant of the name Morgan. In these parts, you'd be a strange man if you were. So you're Henry Morgan. Why did you bring me to this place? I wanted to see if you're the type of man that your voice told me you were. And am I? I have a shipload of cutthroats. Amongst them, my word is law. And yet there's not one of them I can trust. Tonight, two of them tried to kill me. You know why? How should I know? For the sake of this bauble. Are you mad, man, showing this priceless necklace in a place such as this? Look how those around you are gazing upon it. Put it away, man. Ah, there's not a person here, man, enough to try and take it from me. Yes, they're watching it greedily, covetously. But they haven't got the courage to come and take it. There's only one man in this tavern who's not looking at it with greed and desire. And that's the man I feel I can trust. Who is he? You. That's why I brought the bauble out. I suppose you know it's worth. Mm -hmm. Taken from an Aztec temple. Finest bit of goldsmith work I've ever seen. Delicate. Like lace. Set with the purest gems. Yes, I know its value. You couldn't buy it with money. Then you were the man to be trusted. I care not for your past. I'm only interested in your future. Would you like to sail with me, young man? You can't remain hidden on this island, you know. My hand on it, Captain Morgan. I'll sail under you. Oh, and it's Captain Morgan. Oh, it's not often, Captain Morgan, that you honor us with your presence at the Dolphin Tavern. Look, you, I'd come more often if I could be sure of getting service from your fair hand. Oh, it's a flattery of me, Captain Harry. But your friend is a newcomer. I have not seen you here before, sir. What be thee called? Hunter. Mm -hmm. The unexpected sight of Kitty had momentarily bereft him of his senses. And as he gave his name, he could have bitten out his tongue. He had resolved never to use it again, but the damage was done. Amongst this filth, squalor, curses, and cutthroat band, Kitty seemed like an oasis in a dry and thirsty desert. Spellbound, he feasted his eyes upon her, drinking in her coppery hair, spun like a golden halo round her head, the grayness of her eyes, which gave promise of hidden fires, the warmth of her generous mouth. The whiteness of her skin and the soft roundness of her shoulder where her blouse pulled down. Oblivious of the stairs around them, 
He let her hold him in her gaze. Let himself read the invitation in her eyes. Why, sure, Captain Morgan. Your friend has got the bad manners. He stares at a lady. I'm sorry. I, I didn't expect to see someone like you here. I was showing my friend this pretty bauble, Kitty. You like it? Oh, oh, it is wonderful. Can I hold it to my neck? Mm, certainly. Maybe I could fasten it round my neck. Or maybe your friend would do it for me. Well, answer, man, if you won't do it, there's plenty here who will. No, Kitty. Holding it to your neck is one thing. Fastening it on is another. Oh, I would so like to have it. Oh, it is the loveliest thing I've ever seen. A woman would do anything for a thing like that, Captain Morgan. Mayhap. But this necklace is to be put to other purposes. So I'll thank you for it, Kitty. Oh, I, I hate to give it back. Thank you. Now, Mr. Hunter, I think our business here is complete. Will you come back, Mr. Hunter, and see us some other time? I don't know. That depends. Come, Hunter. Time I was off. Good night, Kitty. Good night, Captain Morgan. Good night, Mr. Hunter. Good night. So, you think to ensnare another man, do you, you little cheat? Take your hands off me, dears. I've had enough of your pouring for tonight. Did you see the necklace Captain Morgan had? Yes. Uh. I know it well. I'd do anything to have that necklace for my very own. Yes. Do you love me? That you know too well. Then get that necklace for me. Let that be the proof of your love. Get that necklace for me, and I'll be yours and yours only. The necklace, fashioned centuries before by hands long dead, changes the destinies of these people. Listen for the next episode of A Flute with Henry Morgan.